welcome. Tonight we're reading a portion of The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. I'm sure most people have heard of The Count of Monte Cristo, considering it is written by one of the most widely read French authors. But if you aren't caught up, The Count of Monte Cristo tells the story of Dante, a young sailor who returns to Marseille in the middle of the Bourbon Restoration after Napoleon Bonaparte abdicated and was exiled. He is unjustly accused of being a Bonapartist, and incarcerated. Years later, he escapes and plans his revenge. A little backstory on the author, Alexandre Dumas was born in 1802 to Thomas Alexandre David de la Palaterie and Mary Louise Laboure. Dumas' father, Thomas Alexandre, had been born out of wedlock to Marquis Alexandre Antoine David de la Palaterie and Marie Cezette Dumas, an enslaved woman of African descent from Santo Domingo. Thomas Alexandre dropped his father's name when he enlisted in the French army. He eventually reached the rank of general, the highest rank of any black man in a European army. Alexandre Dumas moved to Paris in 1822 and became immersed in literature. He wrote comedic and dramatic plays, essays, short stories, novels, and travelogues. He was also interested in crimes and scandals and wrote eight volumes of essays on infamous crimes. His widespread popularity and success came from his novels, such as The Three Musketeers and, of course, The Count of Monte Cristo. Now that we know a little bit about the story and about the author, let's get into it, shall we? The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas opens with Edmond Dantes piloting the Pharaon back into Marseille. The captain of the ship, Captain Leclerc, passed away during the voyage. The owner of the vessel, Monsieur Morel, comes aboard and inquires after the change in command. Dante informs him of all that occurred during the voyage, including Leclerc's unfortunate passing. Another crew member, Danglar, came up and began talking with Monsieur Morel while Dante's piloted the Pharaon back into port. This is where we will pick up the story with Danglar and Monsieur Morel's conversation about the unusual actions of Edmond Dante when he took command of the Pharaon. Well, Monsieur Morel, said Danglars, you have heard of the misfortune that has befallen us. Yes, yes, poor Captain Leclerc. He was a brave and an honest man, and a first-rate seaman, one who had seen long and honorable service, as became a man charged with the interests of a house so important as that of Morel and Son replied Danglars. But, replied the owner, glancing after Dante, who was watching the anchoring of his vessel, it seems to me that a sailor needs not be so old as you say, Danglars, to understand his business, for our friend Edmund seems to understand it thoroughly, and not to require instruction from anyone. Yes, said Danglars, darting at Edmund a look gleaming with hate. Yes, he is young, and youth is invariably self-confident, Scarcely was the captain's breath out of his body when he assumed the command without consulting anyone, and he cost us to lose a day and a half at the island of Elba, instead of making for Marseille direct. As to taking command of the vessel, replied Morel, that was his duty as captain's mate. As to losing a day and a half off the island of Elba, he was wrong, unless the vessel needed repairs. The vessel was in as good condition as I am, and as I hope you are, Monsieur Morel, and this day and a half was lost from pure whim, for the pleasure of going ashore and nothing else. Dante, said the ship owner, turning towards the young man, come this way. In a moment, sir, answered Dante, and I'm with you. Then, calling to the crew, he said, let go. The anchor was instantly dropped, and the chain rattling through the porthole. Dante continued at his post in spite of the presence of the pilot, until this maneuver was completed, and then he added, half mast the colors and square the yards. You see, said Danglar, he fancies himself captain already, upon my word. And so, in fact, he is, said the owner. Accept your signature and your partner's, Monsieur Morel. And why should he not have this? asked the owner. He is young, it is true, but he seems to me a thorough seaman and a full experience. A cloud passed over Danglar's brow. Your pardon, Monsieur Morel said Dante, approaching. The vessel now rides at anchor, and I am at your service. You hailed me, I think? Danglar retreated a step or two. I wish to inquire why you stopped at the island of Elba. I do not know, sir, 
It was to fulfill the last instructions of Captain Leclerc, who, when dying, gave me a packet for Marshal Bertrand. Then did you see him, Edmund? Who? The Marshal? Yes. Morel looked around him, and then, drawing Dante on one side, he said suddenly, And how is the Emperor? Very well, as far as I could judge from the sight of him. You saw the Emperor, then? He entered the Marshal's apartment while I was there. And you spoke to him. Why, it was he who spoke to me, sir, said Dante with a smile. And what did he say to you? Asked me questions about the vessel, the time she left Marseille, the course she had taken, and what was her cargo. I believe, if she had not been laden, and I had been her master, she would have bought her. But I told him I was only mate, and that she belonged to the firm of Morel and Son. Ah, yes, he said, I know them. The Morels have been ship owners from father to son. And there was Morel who served in the same regiment with me when I was in garrison at Valence. Pardieu, and that is true, cried the owner, greatly delighted. And that was Polacar Morel, my uncle, who was afterwards a captain. Dante, you must tell my uncle that the emperor remembered him, and you will see it will bring tears into the old soldier's eyes. Come, come, continued he, patting Edmund's shoulders kindly. You did very right, Dante, to follow Captain Leclerc's instructions and touch at Elba. Although, if it were known that you had conveyed a packet to the marshal and had conversed with the emperor, it might bring you into trouble. How could that bring me into trouble, sir? asked Dante, for I did not even know of what I was the bearer, and the emperor merely made such inquiries as he would of the first comer. But pardon me, here are the health officers and the custom inspections coming alongside. And the young man went to the gangway. As he departed, Donglar approached and said, well, it appears that he has given you satisfactory reasons for his landing at Porto Ferrajo. Yes, most satisfactory, my dear Danglar. Well, so much the better, said the supercargo, for it is not so pleasant to think that a comrade has not done his duty. Dante has done his, replied the owner, and that is not saying much. It was Captain Leclerc who gave orders for this delay. Talking of Captain Leclerc, has Dante given you a letter from him? To me? No, was there one? I believe that, beside the packet, Captain Leclerc confided a letter to his care. Of what packet are you speaking, Danglar? Why, that which Dante left at Porto Ferrajo. How do you know he had a packet to leave at Porto Ferrajo? Danglar turned very red. I was passing close to the door of the captain's cabin, which was half open, and I saw him give the packet and letter to Dante. He did not speak to me of it, replied the ship owner. But if there be any letter, he will give it to me. Danglars reflected for a moment. Then, Monsieur Morel, I beg of you, said he, not to say a word to Dante on the subject. I may have been mistaken. At this moment, the young man returned. Danglars withdrew. Well, my dear Dante, are you now free? inquired the owner. Yes, sir. You have not been long detained. No, I gave the custom house officers a bill of our lading. And as to the other papers, they sent a man off with the pilot, to whom I gave them. They have nothing more to do here. No, everything is all right here. Then you must come and dine with me? I really must ask you to excuse me, Monsieur Morel. My first visit is to be due to my father. My first visit is due to my father, though I am not the less grateful for the honor you have done me. Right, Dante, quite right. I always knew you were a good son. And, inquired Dante with some hesitation, do you know how my father is? Well, I believe, my dear Edmund, that I have not seen him lately. Yes, he likes to keep himself shut up in his little room. That proves at least that he is wanted for nothing during your absence. Dante smiled. My father is proud, sir, and if he had not had a meal left, I doubt if he would ask anything from anyone, except from heaven. Well then, after this first visit has been made, we shall count on you. I must excuse myself, Mr. M I must excuse myself, M Monsieur Morel, for after this first visit has been paid, I have another which I am most anxious to pay. True, Dante. I forgot that at the Catalan there's someone who expects you. I forgot that. I forgot that there was at the Catalan someone who expects you no less impatiently than your father, the lovely Mercedes. Dante blushed. Aha, uh -huh, said the owner. I am not in the least surprised. For she has been to me three times inquiring if there was any news of the pharaon. Peste, Edmund, you have a very handsome mistress. 
She is not my mistress, replied the young sailor gravely. She is my betrothed. Sometimes one and the same thing, said Morel with a smile. Not with us, sir, replied Dante. Well, well, my dear Edmund, continued the owner, don't let me detain you. You have managed my affairs so well that I ought to allow you all the time to require for your own. Do you want any money? No, sir, I have all my pay to take, nearly three months' wages. You are a careful fellow, Edmund. Say I have a poor father, sir. Yes, yes, I know how good a son you are, so now hasten away to see your father. I have a son, too, and I should be very wroth with those who detain him from me after three months' voyage. Then I have your leave, sir? Yes, if you have nothing more to say to me. Nothing. Captain Leclerc did not, before he died, give you a letter for me. He was unable to write, sir. But that reminds me that I must ask your leave of absence for some days. To get married? Yes, first, and then to Paris. Very good. Have what time you require, Dante. It would take quite six weeks to unload the cargo, and we cannot get you ready for sea until three months after that. Only be back again in three months for the pharaon, added the owner, patting the young sailor on the back. Cannot sail without her captain. Without her captain, cried Dante, his eyes sparkling with animation. Pray mind what you say, for you are touching on the most secret wishes of my heart. Is it really your intention to make me captain of the pharaon? If I were sole owner, we'd shake hands on it now, my dear Dante, and call it settled. But I have a partner, and you know the Italian proverb, He ha compagno ha padrone. He who has a partner has a master. But the thing is at least half done, as you have one out of two votes. Rely on me to procure the other. I will do my best. Ah, Monsieur Morel, exclaimed the young seaman, with tears in his eyes and grasping the owner's hand. Monsieur Morel, I thank you in the name of my father and of Mercedes. That's all right, Edmund. There's a providence that watches over the deserving. Go to your father, go and see Mercedes, and afterward come to me. Shall I row you ashore? No, thank you. I shall remain and look over the accounts with Danglars. Have you been satisfied him with this voyage? That is, according to the sense you attach to the question, sir. Do you mean is he a good comrade? No, for I think he never liked me since the day I was silly enough, after a little quarrel we had, to propose to him to stop for ten minutes at the island of Monte Cristo to settle the dispute, a proposition which I was wrong to suggest and he was quite right to refuse. If you mean as a responsible agent when you ask me the question, I believe there is nothing to say against him, and that you will be content with the way in which he has performed his duty. But tell me, Dante, if you had command of the pharaoh, should you be glad to see Danglars remain? Captain or mate, Monsieur Morel, I shall always have the greatest respect for those who possess the owner's confidence. That's right, that's right, Dante. I see you are a thoroughly good fellow, and will detain you no longer. Go, for I see how impatient you are. Then I have leave? Go, I tell you. May I have the use of your skiff? Certainly. Then for the present, Monsieur Morel. Then for the present, Monsieur Morel. Farewell, and a thousand thanks. I hope soon to see you again, my dear Edmund. Good luck to you. The young sailor jumped into the skiff and sat down in the stern sheets with the order that he be put ashore at La Canabière. The two oarsmen bent to their work, and the little boat glided away as rapidly as possible in the midst of the thousand vessels which choke up the narrow way, which leads between the two rows of ships from the mouth of the harbor to the Quai d'Orléans. The shipowner, smiling, followed him with his eyes until he saw him spring out on the quay and disappear in the midst of the throng which from five o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock at night swarms in the famous street of La Canabière, a street of which the modern Phocians are so proud that they say with all the gravity in the world, and with the accent which gives so much character to what is said, Paris had a La Canabière, Paris would be a second Marseille. On turning round, the owner saw Danglars behind him, apparently awaiting orders, but in reality also watching the young sailor. But there was a great difference in the expression of the two men, who thus followed the movements of Edmond Dante. So it appears that Danglars has some unsavory feelings for uh, Dante. Well, that's the whole thing about this story. It's a revenge story, so there has to be injustice at some point. So I hope you enjoyed this short portion. We'll be reading another portion on the 24th, so I hope you come back again for that.